Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Council and Committee meeting tonight, May 2nd, uh, 2023. And uh, I call the meeting to order, and the first order of business will be to pass a motion that I'll ask uh, our Deputy Clerk to read out. Okay, we need a mover. We'll need a mover and a seconder. Alan and Brian. Moved by Councillor Wren, seconded by Councillor Hoogley. In the absence of Mayor Bennett, Reeve Watt will assume the chair and at the Council and Committee meeting of May 2nd, 2023, be called to order at 5.32 p.m. All in favor? Carried. Uh, roll call, please. Okay. Mayor Bennett? Reeve Watt? Present. Councillor Gotikio? Present. Councillor Hewitt? Present. Councillor Hoogley? Present. Councillor King? Councillor Wren? Present. All present with the exception of Mayor Bennett and Councillor King. Okay, thank you. Uh, approval of the agenda for ten this tonight. Uh, Councillor Gotikio and uh, Councillor Hewitt. Moved by Councillor Goche Keel, seconded by Councillor Hewitt, that the agenda of the Council and Committee meeting of May 2nd, 2023, be approved as amended with the removal of item 12A, closed meeting. All in favor? Carried. Disclosure of pecuniary interest. Seeing none, we'll move on. Delegations. So, planning and emergency services. Uh, Lori? We'll have to open the meeting first, public meeting. We'll do a motion to open the public meeting. Okay. okay. Motion to open the public meeting by Alan, second by Wendy. Moved by Councillor Wren, seconded by Councillor Hewitt, that the ca Council of the Township of Laurentian Valley, pursuant to Section 34 of the Planning Act, hereby declare a public meeting open at 5.34 p.m. to discuss Zoning Bylaw Amendment File Number Z 202305, Marcus, Secondary Dwelling Unit, and Zoning Bylaw Amendment File Number Z 202306, Veterinary Clinic. All in favor? All in favor? Carried. Mari. Okay, yes, uh, we do have two zoning bylaw amendments before us tonight. Um, application file Z202305, uh, Marcus Secondary Dwelling Unit, and Z202306, uh, Veterinary Clinic. Um, so some of the information I'm going to present will for the notice relates to both files so i'll just um, then focus when i read the next uh, notice on the specific details for each application but generally that take notice that the requirements of section 3410.7 of the planning act is amended uh, were met and that a joint notice of application and notice of public meeting were given for both these applications advising of this public meeting on May 2nd and for both uh, the notices were issued in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act and the sites were posted on the 12th of April 2023. Um, this is a public meeting so it is the forum for which people can provide their comments. Um, again if you make your need to make your comments prior to Council making a decision they can either be in writing or verbal. Um, and in terms of that, it is to preserve your ability to appeal a decision if you so choose to the Ontario Land Tribunal. And if you do not uh, make a representation prior to the decision being made, the tribunal may decide to not allow for your appeal. Again, additional information is available for viewing at the township office and anybody can attend to the office to see those files. So with the particulars now that are related to both of these applications, the other item to note is that when you do make comments, they do form part of the public record and you're giving your consent uh, for us to share that information, including your name and address with others um, that have a relevance to the file um, by submitting those comments. So in terms of the specifics of this application, file Z 202305, the purpose of the amendment is to rezone lands to provide a reduced setback from the extractive industrial reserve EMR zone for a dwelling in order to permit the construction of a secondary dwelling unit on the subject lands. 
The existing primary dwelling is located within the minimum 150 meter setback for a dwelling from the extractive industrial zone and which is located on the same property. So the proposal is to either construct a coach house style of secondary dwelling unit, which is a detached dwelling unit within 25 meters of the EMR zone, or to uh, construct a secondary dwelling unit within 15 meters of the EMR zone as an addition to the existing residence that's currently within that EMR zone buffer of 150 meters. The effect of the amendment is to establish a rural exception 84 zone with special exceptions to permit the construction of either the coach house within a minimum setback of 25 meters from the EMR zone or in addition to the existing primary dwelling to construct a secondary dwelling unit within a minimum 15 meter setback from the EMR zone. The subject lands would then also be rezoned from rural to rural exception 84. So the lands affected by this amendment are known municipally as 1865 Sandy Beach Road and they're within part lot 14 concession 8 the geographic township of Alice. And so we do also have um, a sign in board circulating for anybody who is here that wishes to receive further notice of a decision of Council there's one for each of the application files, if you uh, wish before you leave um, to sign that that uh, any members of the public may do so. In terms of uh, comments received, um, we did not receive any written comments from members of the public um, prior to publishing. Um, we do have uh, just the usual comments that we do receive from some of our utilities, and we did receive a written comment from Enbridge, just that there's no objection to the application. Okay, any member from council uh, for discussion? Questions? Anyone from the public wishing to make comment? Please state your name. No, I was just one. I'm John Van Hoof, and I live in uh, Daryl's Road. And uh, what is this property going to be used for? Is a granny suite, or what is it? Be because uh, they haven't got uh, room for another severance. Um, yes, just to reiterate. So this is for a secondary dwelling unit. So a secondary dwelling unit is. Um, Per the Planning Act, it's a second um, unit that it, that can be used either as an apartment in house, which is what one option here that they're reviewing is to do it as an addition, which would be again to add kind of an apartment attached to the house. The other option for a secondary dwelling unit is to do it as a separate detached dwelling, um, and that would be a one story, uh, no more than um, the smaller footprint than the existing primary dwelling with a secondary dwelling unit it, it is something that cannot be severed from the primary property it's it's secondary to the primary residence and would remain that way so it's it's not a situation where you're going to have a severance then coming in later on and it, it, this there's still a, a decision to be made um, by the applicants as to which way they would go with it in terms of once they determine their their needs and the the costs so if they built the uh, two houses on that property what would happen if uh, uh if it was ever sold they'd have to sell the two of them or what uh, yes so with a secondary dwelling unit that is the the nature of it it is not a severance so it always remains with the same property and uh, when we are going through zoning applications because we're dealing with the rural lands but this is something that's an initiative by the province of Ontario as well that if we were in um, an area that's on sewer and water as a right um, they would have that ability to do that so this is increasingly something that's being seen across the province um, and again just reiterating that it always stays together um, on the same property without a severance. Councillor Ren. So, so you are correct in, in that it's like a granny suite, but they don't call them granny suites any longer. So it, it is a, a, a pro, uh, another house on the same property. If the property ever gets sold, it gets sold as, as one whole, whole piece. There's no severance possible. 
It's a secondary dwelling on the same lot. So uh, they they don't have to have the frontage or nothing. Uh, there's only enough frontage there for one property. Okay. So, uh, because what what's to stop people from doing that all along? You know, uh, you're uh, opening a big can of worms here. Uh, so so the, it's the, the anybody could do that. actually who who is uh, allowing this to happen. Uh, and and it, it's been allowed as granny uh, uh, suites or whatever you want to call them for for years. Nothing has changed. It's it's the same same thing as a granny suite. The only thing is that that was family, hey. Eh? And uh, now once the family is gone, the first thing you know they're renting it out, and and that's allowed. Um, yes, if I can just speak to that. So um, again, so that just to reinforce, so this is the, the direction. Now we're, we're dealing specifically with a rural one. So we have a little bit of different control related to that, that question. But the provincial initiative is that um, there is an allowance for actually up to two additional units when we're on sewer and water areas. And when we're in more rural areas, again, looking at the secondary dwelling unit as a way to either provide um, Again, places for people to age closer to family, but it's also to provide mortgage helpers and that second unit for income. So the in, so there is no restriction on who resides there. It isn't necessarily for family. It could be for family, but it is something that is not dictated by the planning. And in terms of the frontage, the property does have you know frontage on Sandy Beach Road, so that the frontage isn't isn't in question. And again. We're reinforcing that this is not something that is allowed or sets the stage for for a future severance. Even if it is a coach house, it always would remain as part of the main property to be sold together. And this is, as I say, this is um, we, we've approved numbers of them that come as a right now based on the general provisions in the zoning. It's just because of this being um, a situation nearer to uh, an aggregate resource that that is already encroached upon though by other existing dwellings that we're looking for the to put the exception in place you need to state your name i don't want the microphone i can speak loud enough <laughs> yeah online you need so to state your name build another house on their land please state your name Darrell Van Hoof. Okay, and your, your point? My point is that we can go out and build another house in our land now? If you go through the proper channels, yes. Under the Planning Act, it, it is possible. And I could just reiterate, so in the rural areas, again, we do have to look at what your specific zoning is, um, but there are some general provisions that most lots, if you're over um, two acres, that they're there's many that can be accommodated. So that is something that is has been in place since 2016 within the township. Does the applicant wish to make any comment? <coughs> no comment. Okay. Any further? Okay, all in favor? I just would like to confirm with Nevada that we don't have anybody online. Okay. Um, if, okay. 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 The motion. So moved by Councillor Wren, second by Councillor Hughley. All in favor? Uh, I'll just read it first. Uh, moved by Councillor Wren and seconded by Councillor Hughley that Council and Committee approves application for zoning bylaw amendment file number Z202305 Marcus secondary dwelling and clinic and recommend sorry I'll just sorry take that out and recommends that council forward bylaw number 2023050331 as presented to the bylaw portion of the regular council meeting of May 16th 2023 for enactment all in favor carried So the second application tonight, then um, we will need a motion on that one. Moved by Councillor Goche Keel and second by Councillor Hughley. Let me read it 
it first. Okay. Uh, moved by Councilor Gotekiel, seconded by Councilor Hoogley, that the Council Committee approves application for zoning bylaw amendment file number Z202306, Veterinary Clinic, and recommends that Council forward bylaw 2023-05032 as presented to the bylaw portion of the regular Council meeting of May 16th, 2023 for enactment. And then it needs to go on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, oh no, I'm not going to vote on, just going to discussion now. So any discussion by council? I, I just do need to read the, the notice okay, uh, yes, yes. details um, just before we proceed a little further. Um, so yeah, so in terms of this application, uh, Z file 202306, the purpose and the effect of it is to rezone the lands to permit the construction of an animal hospital, also referred to as a veterinary clinic, with a maximum gross floor area of 250 square meters. The effect of the amendment is to establish a highway commercial exception 29 zone with special provisions to permit an animal hospital with a maximum gross floor area of 250 square meters as the only use on the land so zoned. And the amendment also rezones the subject lands then from residential one to highway commercial exception 29 HCE 29. So based on pre-consultations with MTO, the use is being limited to an animal hospital with a maximum floor area to match what is proposed as the subject lands are located on a provincial highway under the jurisdiction of MTO. The lands affected by the amendment are known municipally as 40949 Highway 41 and are within part lot 28, concession two in the geographic township of Stafford in the township of Laurentian Valley. So again, um, the notice was circulated in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act. And uh, we did have one email um, from a neighboring property owner um, asking for some clarification on uh, what was proposed and we provided them with that information and there was no further comment um, or response required. Uh, again, the, the other questions that they had were related to um, potential impact on neighboring properties in terms of property tax and value. Um, and then the only other uh, comments we did receive from public bodies were uh, the city of Prembrook and Enbridge both expressing no objection to the to the application. Um, we had not heard any additional comments back from MTO, but we had provided some initial pre consultation um, and we'll be following more pre consultation with MTO for the, the site plan approval process. Okay, thank you, Laurie. Discussion by Council or comments? Mr. Hugan. Uh, my question is why was the city of Pembroke commenting on this? Um, we do have to circulate uh, all municipalities within one kilometer of of any application so they would have been circulated so some communities just as a, a rule like i would often be circulated adjacent ones and may send back no objection kind of check the the form and send that back anything else from council anything from the public can you state your name uh, Enoch, I uh, just have some questions on the use of the vet clinic. Their hours, are they planning to host animals like overnight on weekends? Do they have an incinerator? What uh, What's going to be the scope of work for the vet or animal hospital? I'll let our planner respond to that, please. Okay, so in terms of some of the specific details of the operation of an animal hospital or vet clinic, like it is restricted to that particular use. Um, are the hours of operation are something that we normally um, direct for a business as part of, of zoning or even uh, specifically as part of um, a site plan agreement. So we do have a representative though here uh, for the applicant that some of these questions on the particulars of operation maybe may be better uh, equipped to to speak to. Okay, Mr. McParland. Hi, my name is Greg McParland. I'm here on behalf of Dr. Tina Zaleski. Uh, to answer your questions, uh, there is no plans for an incinerator at this time. Normal business hours, I believe, are between eight and five. Uh, they don't plan to house any animals outside overnight. It is possible that animals can stay over during due to surgery, but uh, there's sp specific rooms within the building that will contain those animals. Okay. Yes. okay, the motion's been read. Anything further from the public? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, yeah, there's no uh, nobody online. Okay, all in favor? Carried. Motion to adjourn the public meeting. Councillor Hewitt, second by Councillor Gochikio. Moved by Councillor Hewitt, seconded by Councillor Goche Keel, that the Council of the Township of Laurentian Valley hereby declare the public meeting of May 2nd, 2023, be adjourned at 5.52 p.m. All in favor? Carried. So under business, we uh, need a motion to uh, request an ex to extend the draft plan approval for Cooper subdivision. Okay. Um, can we hear the report, please? Yes, certainly. So our next um, our next item is related to a request uh, by the developer um, for an extension to draft plan approval. This is the subdivision file one three zero zero three, known as Cooper Subdivision. Um, so this is actually my seventh report to council. It is they have been requesting regularly extensions to draft plan approval. Uh, I have had further discussions with the uh, the consultant on behalf of the developer and they have um, had discussions with their client related to phasing and trying to move things forward at a certain point. Um, the response back is that uh, their client is still waiting to watch um, construction prices and they may they may re reassess as time moves forward, but at this point they don't have an immediate plan to to move forward with the with final approval. Discussion. Um, my question was, there's a $1,000 reapplication fee to the County of Renfrew, and yet we have just as much work on our end as the County has for their, do we have any charges that we've been doing? Because these, these come up every meeting, there seems to be another one coming up and there's really, without something in there, there's no incentive for them to push things through. Uh, is there any charge from the township or just from the county? Yes, yeah, so currently, um, so in terms of the process, it is uh, the county's process for extending draft plan approval, but they do ask for the resolution from the township. At this point in time, in our tariff of fees, we don't have an additional fee that we do charge. Um, however, I will be bringing back in the near future um, a whole review of our tariff of fees bylaw related to bringing in, um, you know, to, to address our mandatory pre-consultation and, and looking at a few other items. So that's certainly something that we can uh, research what other municipalities are doing if they're actually charging in addition to the county fees on that. And we can bring that forward as a, an item for consideration as part of that review in the near future. I know, Lori, I've mentioned before that, uh, like maybe on our part, we have to kind of uh, ask or share information as to what's going on in our own municipality and with other community or other companies coming in and maybe wanting to build or whatever, it's going to put them that much further behind where the market is today and uh, it's probably better to move today than yesterday. Uh, just to that to rebut, yes, we've expressed numerous times and we've also directed other development groups uh, to this property. And my understanding is that um, the same property owner also has property in abutting municipalities and it's the same situation that uh, for, for their own reasons, they're, they're kind of in a, a holding pattern. Okay, do you want to read the motion, please? Okay, move in a second there. Move first, uh, Councillor Wren and Councillor Goche Keel. Moved by Councillor Wren, seconded by Councillor Goche Keel, that Council of the Township of Lantern Valley supports the request for an extension to draft plan approval for the County of Renfrew subdivision, file number 47T13003, Cooper subdivision, and requests the County of Renfrew approve the extension as requested. All in favor. Carried. Under subcommittees, uh, Pemberton Area Airport, Mr. Wren. So uh, at our uh, meeting a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> we had a, quite a lengthy discussion on uh, line painting at the airport. And I, I don't have to tell Mark this, that it's been a, a, a huge issue to get uh, lines painted. It just becomes a, a bigger issue at the airport, being a certified airport. 
<coughs> Transport Canada are, are not very happy when your, your lines are not where they need to be. <clears throat> that being said, we uh, went through all of last season and we had four different contractors that we uh, attempted to get them to uh, show up to do line painting and were totally unsuccessful. Uh, we started again early this year on the hunt and uh, looks like it's going to be the exact same thing. There's now paint available, but they're so far behind that they don't have time to get to the airport. So we did contact a few other airports and, and what they have done is gone out and purchased their own equipment. So our equipment should be uh, arriving on site. So moving forward, we'll be able to do all of our own line painting at the airport. So it's a, a cost of about $25,000 and the savings in the first year are about 23,000. So it pays for itself pretty quickly. It's just, uh, now we need to find the manpower to get out there and get them painted. So uh, as well, uh, there, as everybody knows, there's a, a new commander at the uh, garrison, uh, Jason, uh, Colonel Jason uh, Guinea. And we have made contact with him and we have a meeting scheduled with him and uh, some of his management team at the airport coming up in May. So looking, looking forward to that. They're our biggest customer up there. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. Uh, more than one way to skin a cat, eh? Yeah. Emergency management? Yes, yeah, so I'll just provide uh, a council with just a brief update on where we're at uh, with related to the Ottawa River um, flood event of this year. Um, so uh, council should be aware, um, I did circulate uh, the uh, newest press release that was issued last night uh, by the Ottawa River Regulation Planning Board. Um, and again, for anybody who's listening online, you know, we do stress that please follow uh, the Ottawa River Regulation Planning Board website for the most current up-to-date information. Um, we do draw upon that, uh, but also, you know, just to make sure that you get that information in a timely manner. Um, so waters have, levels have risen, uh, certainly overnight, um, as we have had a the Sullivan Point Road, it is now uh, crested over that. Uh, Public Works do continue to monitor, um, and Mark may be able to clarify if there's any questions related to what they're they're doing related to that road and the reasonings. Um, we do have some, then increasingly with some access issues, but uh, at this point, we're not aware of anybody um, having to be out of their, their home. We are tracking levels that are um, just slightly exceeding the 2017 levels. The difference um, being that the, the Pembroke section, um, which is the part above Des Alumet Bridge, it is a little bit more than what they had experienced in 2017, but certainly, um, you know, per the press release, we're talking about, um, you know, a meter to 45 centimeters below what was 2019. We're not talking about um, those levels at all, um, sorry. 45 centimeters to a meter increases in some spots, but in our areas, it's probably from where it sat yesterday morning, projected to the peak being 35 to maybe 55 in, in that range, depending on which section of our, our sections of river that we have, because we do look to two different sets of elevations. So the specific details are very clearly set out in that press release, so um, people can take note of that. We have noted that there's more activity going on at the Matheson Park sandbagging, um, station and that sand and sandbags still remain available there. We have strategically also placed a sand in, into other areas of the community above the Des Element Bridge area um, based on, on inquiries that came into the to the office and we do um, maintain our, our sandbag supply at a very good level. So we're not at issue with that. So we'll continue to monitor and we'll provide um, updates as information comes forward. So if help was needed, um... People who are willing to volunteer. Are they? Could they contact the township office and uh, yes, seek uh, some direction there? Yes, we by times we do have uh, requests. Um, you know, looking for where people may be able to find help. Um, if there is that, you know, um, people can reach out to us. The other thing is, um, you know, if they're out and about, uh, where activity does also tend to happen is that Matheson Park, a sand baking station that they could, you know, go there to to assist if if there's people there that. Or sandbagging that might be able to also direct them to neighbors as well. But um, yes, they, but by times we do have some seniors that look for a little extra help. Okay, thank you. Okay, corporate service and protection business.
Motion. Motion. Does we hear the report? Go ahead. Well, hello, everyone. <laughs> this is my, uh, I think, my first um, report to you. So, just if there's anything that uh, in the future that you require from reports or that you're used to that the previous treasurer just let me know in a friendly email and I'll try to include them. Um, for this report tonight though, uh, this is probably the first of these that have come to this current council. Some of the uh, returning members may have seen one of these agreements in the past. Um, but on September 21st, 2022, the township registered um, arrear certificates against a number of properties and that really starts the clock on a tax sale proceeding. Um, the owners of the property have one year after that registration date to either pay the cancellation price or enter into uh, an extension agreement. Extension agreements are fairly um, common when it gets to that point, specifically when there's a residence on the property. Uh, it, it allows the um, property owner to come to a, an agreement with the township that will cover those arrears over a um, agreed upon time frame. So in this instance, uh, the property owner did contact me very shortly after I started uh, and, and wanted to come to some sort of agreement. So we were able to work through uh, an agreement that's going to cover um, 20 monthly payments. So the idea is that it would be um, the, the current, as in right now, taxes and the arrears would be paid by the end of 2024 but it also calls for the uh, tax invoices from now until the end of 2024 to be paid on time. So those, those uh, installment payments or those tax invoices are not part of this agreement. But if those were missed or one of the um, monthly payments is missed, then this agreement would be null and void. And we would go back to the uh, tax sale proceeding and, and carry on where we basically left off. Uh, so the payment is in Schedule uh, B to the agreement. Um, if there's any questions you've watched, I'm happy to, to answer them. Questions? Councillor Wren. So if there is a, a default the, the, and the clock has ticked so far, and at the default, the, the, the clock doesn't start over again, it starts where it stops? Correct. Okay. And, and there is interest charged on Yes. Yes. So the calculation to get to that payment included our forecast of the interest um, being added to the tax roll. Councillor Hewitt. Um, just because I'm new and not familiar with this process. So um, how many times can this happen? Like if, well, if there's not a payment made and, and you do a reagreement again and then six months, you, like how many times do you keep revisiting it? It would be my recommendation that you wouldn't revisit it. So I've expressed to the property owner that where now that we've read, now that the tax arrear certificate has been registered on the property, it, it's it's more than just reminder letters saying, you know, please pay or you need to pay. So the arrear certificate is registered gives out one year window and then the agreement basically is if you, if there's a default there is no more agreements because the, the municipality does not have to enter into an agreement it'd be my recommend recommendation that we do uh because the extension agreement is a tool that we can use um to to recoup those funds right without going through that process so to answer your question i i would say that we wouldn't come back on this particular uh property to to do another agreement in the future thank you any other question can you read the motion, please? Okay, mover and seconder. Mover by uh, Councillor Hughley, seconded by Councillor Wren. Moved by Councillor Hughley, seconded by Councillor Wren, that the Corporate and Protection Services Committee recommend Council of the Township of Laurentian Valley to enter into a tax arrears extension agreement pursuant to section 378 of the Municipal Act 2000, 2001 with the owner of the property identified as rule number 4766. 066-025-44400. All in favor? Carry. Item B, report motion. Community living flying flag request. That's me. <laughs> okay, so um, we received a request from the 
uh, Upper Ottawa Valley Community Living to support their event of flying the flag for the month of May. Um, and they were hoping that we would uh, support that initiative with them and and fly that in our, so it would be on our community flagpole, which is outside where the uh, County of Renfrew flag is, and it would be flown beneath, beneath there, so. Question? I would suggest that we move forward with this. It's something that we've done in the past and they've uh, requested each year and each year we have accommodated. And so I think that we should fly the flag and I would make that motion. Okay. I would second that motion. Okay. okay. Discussion? All in favor. Okay, I'll just move it here. I'll just read it out, sorry. Moved by Councillor Wren, seconded by Councillor Gauthier Keel, that the Township of Laurentian Valley Corporate Services and Protection Committee recommend to Council to support the Upper Ottawa Valley Community Flying Our Flag event and approve the flying of the community flag on the Township of Laurentian Valley Community Flagpole for the remainder of the month of May 2023. And that was carried. Mm -hmm. Under information, the animal control report for March 2023 is there. Any questions on that one? I noticed the reflection is very similar to uh, previous months and uh, those felines are back at it again. Uh, fire department report came in today. Um, Y'all had a chance to look at it. Unfortunately, the fire chief isn't here tonight, but uh, we can certainly redirect any question or concern to him. Should there be any? Councillor Wren. Just on some of these uh, accidents that we're having on uh, east end of, of Pembroke, uh, should we be forwarding those to the uh, MTO just to uh, reinforce uh, our belief that sooner than later we need traffic lights at uh, uh, Drive-In Road and 148 and, and at the uh, Quebec Turnoff? Sounds like a good idea. You want to make that a motion? Yes, I would like that we, anytime we have those, that we forward it to somebody at uh, at MTO so that they're very aware of, of uh, uh, the accident rates in that area. Okay. Would there be a seconder? Question? It may actually need to be sent to multiple people at MTO so that it doesn't get lost on one person's desk too, so that would... Uh... But possibly Mr. Mr. Belanger and then CC to. I will second, second it. it. Yes, you know, every, every month we look at these and there's always one or two accidents and it's all in the east end of Pembroke and, and I'm sure they're all on 148. Yeah, there, there's also an accident there just where they want to turn left is it Oak, uh, not Oak Ridge, um, Old, Mill. Old Mill Road. I just about we ended somebody there the other day. They decided the last minute they were turning. So the motion. Okay, so moved by Councillor Wren, second by Councillor Kochekio, uh, to forward uh, accident uh, summary list of accident reports prepared by the uh, the Township Fire Department to be forwarded to MTO for re for review. And maybe to Mr. Belanger and others. Okay, so we'll to forward ac uh, accident reports prepared by the fire department, township fire department, be forwarded to MTO for review, Mr. Belanger and other agencies as required. Good. All in favor? Carried. Subcommittees, Festival Hall. She is not here tonight. Um, Pembroke Public Library. So unfortunately, we were unable to have our meeting this past month uh, again, um, due to unforeseen circumstances, our CEO was uh, out of country and unable to travel back in time. So we are resuming the week after next, our meeting again. But I will highlight that I know at the library, there's still tons of stuff happening. Um, if you go on the website, you can see there's something almost every day happening. Um, and I know that uh, the team there is uh, gearing up for the Multicultural Festival, which is happening in July. 
So it's July 14th and 15th, so it's a Friday and Saturday. And uh, I know they're looking at getting extra uh, venues and extra restaurants and performers, and it's gonna be a little bit bigger even than last year they're anticipating, and it's going to be held at the waterfront. I also noted that uh, the library was noted for the multicultural event in the uh, Ottawa Valley. Oh, yes, thank you for, yes. for highlighting that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it's uh, it's well on the map, as um, Reeve Watt had said. Uh, it was highlighted actually on a provincial level, I believe, as well uh, for uh, this event. So I think that's uh, quite quite a compliment to uh, the library in Pembroke. And it'll be a two day event this year. It's a two day event, yeah. Or, yeah Friday, Friday and, Saturday. and Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very good. Works and property subcommittees report is there for the auto upper auto valley waste recovery center um, community development and recreation culture um, strategic planning process uh, so good evening, everybody. So Sean and I will be co-presenting uh, this report. Um, so it, we are looking for a recommendation for council to approve that staff embark on the next strategic planning process for the 2024-2028 strategic plan. Um, as many of you around the table were aware and part of the previous strategic plan, um, it is a big process and um, your involvement in the last plan was uh, highly recognized and we reviewed the process that um, you had embarked upon. We reviewed the current strategic plan and as it is coming to its end um, in 2023, we are ready to embark on the next, um, the next revamp and um, revisions of the strategic plan. Um, the benefits of the strategic plan is to create some clear guidelines and goals that really reflect Council's um, direction for the next four years. Um, we look to include Council as part of this, staff and stakeholders as well, and really drive LV in the direction that we collectively agree upon. So, uh, Just to add on, on kind of how we envision this working, um, we're here today to, to receive your support or to, to receive your, um, your stamp of approval on embarking on this, like Katie mentioned. Uh, and then periodically you'd be involved as a group of council, obviously steering and flying at that 10,000 feet and ensuring that, um, that we as staff are preparing a document that you will be the champions of for that four year term. Um, where we'll go from here is if, if we do receive the approval, uh, Katie and I will then look to, to, to get a, a steering committee um, established and we will likely be uh, looking for one to two members of council at least one to be on that steering committee with us to to just ensure that when we're setting up meetings and we're setting up the process that, that you have some um, that you're involved or somebody from council is involved and then we would set up meetings and go through that uh, the process and eventually um, after we develop the plan we will come back later in the year hopefully with a new strategic plan with objectives uh, into the future. And then just the financial implications of it. Uh, so it, it is an unbudgeted um, item, but we anticipate the cost to be fairly immaterial. Uh, we think it'll be somewhere in the in the vicinity of $2,500 to, to $5,000. So uh, as the treasurer, I, I feel that there's, um, we'll be able to make that work um, for this important process. So with that, we'll turn it back to the chair if there's any questions. Anyone wish to make a motion? Councillor Hewitt, second by Councillor Wren. Can we hear the motion, please? Sure. Moved by Councillor Hewitt, seconded by Councillor Wren, that the Community Development Rec Recreation and Culture Committee recommends that Council of the Township of Laurentian Valley approve staff to update the current 2019 to 2023 strategic plan as the plan is nearing its term. Discussion, comments? I think the timing is is right on target to uh, get ahead of the game and uh, you have a chance to review what was there and where we want to go to now. So uh, I think that's perfect. Um, all in favor? Carried. So before Just, you, oh. Sorry, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, uh, as time goes on, you can come back to council and ask which or who may wish to uh, participate with you. Yes, absolutely. So now that we have um, approval, we'll embark on the first step of this planning process um, and and we'll approach council to determine who will be sitting on that steering committee. Okay. Uh, so before you, you have a report um, highlighting activities for the month. Uh, so we had our e-newsletter go out for the third month. Um, we are on target for open rates. It's still hovering around 71%, which definitely exceeds the average open rate for e-news new email blasts in general so that's really really positive and we are continuing to grow our readership uh, we are also um, embarking on having a print copy as well and Betty is going to, need to help spearhead that um, by dropping off the print version at various locations within Laurentian Valley uh, just to make it more accessible which is great um, volunteer week campaign ran on socials for April 16th to 22nd, um, highlighting a specific volunteer group a day. The campaign received really positive feedback and um, was a great way for us to really showcase how big our volunteer um, group really is. Small Business Week isn't until October, but I wanted to share with you that we are actively working with the Town of Petawawa, City of Pembroke, and Enterprise Renfrew County to create a one-day conference for small businesses. We have done small business campaigns via social, but we've never hosted um, an event for our small businesses, so this will be the first one uh, for Laurentian Valley as a collaborative. We're really looking to provide a, to create a workshop where small businesses will leave with something tangible um, and really Really get ahead in their business so we're highlighting social media content creation uh, and bringing in experts as well as creating a networking opportunity so we're started planning for that and hoping it'll become an annual that can grow each year i attended the obta gm um, at Maple House Banquet Hall, which was a really great opportunity. One item I did want to highlight was that they embarked on a culinary tourism strategy, which was very interesting and something that um, I think has potential for the area and for our businesses in Laurentian Valley to um, engage further to think about ways that they can elevate their business through um, culinary tourism. So I want to highlight that if anybody is interested in, in seeing that strategy, I can definitely provide that as well. Uh, we did receive um, um, an app. We sorry, we our Canada summer jobs application uh, was positive for only one student this summer. Um, typically, we receive at least funding for five, um, so it was much smaller. Um, the consensus seems to be that there is fewer um, recipients this year in general for the area. So. Uh, but Kiana McKinnon did start on Monday, so we do have an office administration student that has started for um, Canada Summer Jobs program. And then there are just other activities highlighted here. Uh, one item I do want to bring attention to just in light of the flooding is that um, emergency preparedness week is next week. And we do have a campaign running on social as well as a contest that Nevada and Lori are overseeing um, that involves or allows people to participate by um, creating a emergency kit bingo card. Um, so it will also be going up on, on socials as well next week. Any questions, comments? Katie, can you speak a little bit to Zen City and what it does and how it does for us? Okay, so um, I haven't played around with it too, too much, but from um, the County of Renfrew received funding for the Zen City application. Um, it is a platform that uh, we have access to, to use as public engagement forum. Uh, so it is actually branded LV. So it is the counties, but we have our own um, kind of, you know, landing page, if you will, where we can host um, opportunities to um, in embark in public engagement. So we can use it for surveys, we can use it to share information, people can comment and provide feedback, um, it can generate reports for us. It's a tool that I, I will be exploring further for the use of the strategic planning process as we engage with stakeholders um, and make sure that we're being as accessible and open uh, as much as possible as we see fit. Um, but it, it looks like a really exciting opportunity for us to use and have access to the software to really engage our public um, in this platform. I don't know if Lori wants to provide anything further to Zen City, but um, I know she was also a little bit in the know about it, um, but uh, in case I'm missing something, but um, it's an exciting platform that I'll share more once I've explored and played around with it a bit. <laughs> okay, thank you. Councillor Hewitt, you had a question? 
Well, I don't know because actually that was my question. Oh, I thought, what is Zen City? <laughs> so thank you for explaining that. If you like, I can provide more um, of a vis visual in next month once I played around with it a no, bit or once we look at its uses. I know that it's new and uh, mm -hmm. I just thought that, well, a little bit more of an explanation maybe at this time might be beneficial. So Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Subcommittees, Friends of the Disabled. Wendy. So as you know, uh, the polar dip did not happen um, when it was supposed to due to the weather. Um, and that is a huge fundraiser for the Friends of the Disabled. So um, there still were some that donated and there was $1,015 that did come in. Um, people still wanted to give their donations, which was great. Um, but that definitely is less than what they're used to without having the polar dip. So there is um, in the works a couple of fundraising ideas that are possibly coming forth late fall, um, but they're not confirmed yet. It's still in the works. So when I have more information on that, I will share it with you. Thank you. Councillor Hughley, Shady Nook. Uh, Shady Nook uh, had a meeting last night and uh, soccer registration is closed. And I think uh, you saw in Katie's presentation how Shady Nook was at the top of the uh, requested or the tracked people and that would account for 340 kids are registered for soccer in Shady Nook with another 46 on a waiting list so uh, that would generate uh, quite a bit of traffic there um, but yeah soccer's alive and well in Shady Nook and looking forward to a good summer. Excellent. Allison Fraser, Rick, Betty's gone, Forestley Park, no, that's me. Nothing happening there yet. Pleasant View Park. Stafford Park. Uh, we don't have a meeting until Tuesday. Tuesday coming. And Laurentian Valley uh, Four Seasons Trail Committee. Um, not a whole lot to report. We're sort of in, in between seasons, but uh, I will note that uh, we did go jointly with Allison Fraser and we were successful on uh, purchasing the Zamboni uh, and Cassidy's uh, delivered it for us uh, last Tuesday. So we're all set for next winter. I don't want to wish the summer away, but uh, but yeah, we were successful in getting it and it'll be a huge asset for both volunteer groups. Um, we were uh, about what our what our budget was, so. So the Rees report from the county is there. Um, some good reading in there if you've got an extra hour or two to uh, get through it. Uh, and council comments. Going once, twice. Adjournment, motion to adjourn by Councillor Wren, second by Councillor Gotikio. All in favor. Carried. Moved by Councilor Wren, seconded by Councilor Gautier-Keel, that the Council and Committee meeting of May 2nd, 2023 be adjourned at 5, 6.25 p.m. <laughs>